in the world. Up that road you can just see the beginning of there is the mountain village of Paluma which is this rather gorgeous it's a former tin mining town amongst other things so we're gonna go up there now but before we start it is currently 34 degrees that will become relevant soon The road up the mountain is called Mount Speck Road and it's about 18 kilometers long and it twists and turns right the way up the hill. We're pretty much at sea level here and the top of the road is about 850, 900 meters. So it's quite a climb. The road itself was built in the 1930s, eventually opening in 1935. People had been campaigning to build a proper all-weather road up here for many years prior to that. Before then it was just basically a series of horse trails. It was done as an employment project during the Great Depression, effectively. Upwards of 180 people would have been employed at any one time. And everything was done by hand. No machinery, nothing like that. Just a load of blokes with shovels and pickaxes. I'll never complain about my job again. Ooh, that was a tight one. There'll be no knee-dragging hero action from me, I'm afraid. I freely admit, I'm a pussy. Just coming to Little Crystal Creek now which is a well-known spot along here and it contains a really beautiful bridge which is the sole remaining stone arch bridge in use in Queensland you can also swim there as you can tell by the attire of those gentlemen because we're at a fair bit of an altitude now well gravel the water is too cold and too fast moving for crocodiles. So this is her. The Crystal Creek Stone Arch Bridge. Rather beautiful piece of engineering. And as I said, the last Stone Arch Bridge surviving in Queensland. Also a rather fetching waterfall right here it is a very nice part of the world just a small matter of getting back over here in motorcycle boots without falling and smashing my face off of something that bit of the waterfall there is about three meters and there's a nice deep plunge pool at the end of it which people frequently jump off did it once about uh, 11, 12 years ago, I'll be honest, now that I'm in my 40s and aware of my own mortality, don't really have any desire to do it again. Right, onwards towards Paluma. You can just see there a bush turkey. Fairly common sight in this part of the world. That's a female, and they're quite skittish. 
Ah, this one doesn't seem too bothered by me though. And here we are going over the top of it. What a nice place. And I safely made it. So 2,925 feet, according to that sign, is the elevation. That's about 900 meters. And the reason I took note of the temperature at the start of this video, 26 degrees. It's eight degrees cooler up here than it was down at sea level. And in this part of the world, those eight degrees are a blessed relief. White settlers first came to this area in the 1870s or thereabouts and they found a lot of mineral deposits up here, tin in particular. They also found stuff such as silver, lead and even topaz. Tin mining continued here until the 1980s when a dip in price uh, caused the continued extraction to become unprofitable. An awful lot of logging happened around here as well. As I'm sure you've noticed in the video already, there's no shortage of trees and it was all pretty high value stuff like hardwoods of various different types. Logging was permitted from the 1930s onwards and from the 30s to the 60s, a lot of trees got chopped down. It stopped again in the 1970s, however, there were plans to recommence it in the 1990s. Thankfully, the entire Queensland wet tropics was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988, which has stopped any further logging of the area. And I think we can all be thankful for that. Paluma has also been popular as a, a kind of resort town, I guess. People have a lot of holiday homes and things up here. And during the early part of its existence, a lot of people would come up here to recover from TB as its comparatively cool climate was better for people suffering from the breathing difficulties associated with it. There is also numerous rather nice walking tracks around here. So we'll go have a look at one of them now. As is often the case when I'm in a forest in North Queensland, I'm getting serious Jurassic Park vibes. You wouldn't be surprised to see a velociraptor just scampering out in front of you. Of course, the modern day equivalent of the velociraptor, ooh, big kind of step there, the cassowary is found around here. This is the most southern extent of its habitat. They're quite endangered, unfortunately, mostly due to habitat loss, but unfortunately, a lot of them come a cropper in car accidents too. I've only ever seen one in the wild, a juvenile, a few months ago up near Innisfail. Spectacular bird. Also very dangerous. It is rather nice in here though. There is a little weir that was built here. I don't know exactly why, but if I was to speculate, I'd say the tin mining history of this town has something to do with it. They used to get a lot of alluvial tin ore as far as I know, they stopped actually mining the alluvial tin ore in the 1920s because they were using the local water supply to wash it and that obviously caused issues with drinking water and stuff. So I think from the 1920s onwards, it was only rock ore that was mined. Anyway, time to get back on the bike. 
and go visit a really nice lookout that's a kilometre or two further down the road. I just realised I parked on a kind of steep uh, hill and there we go. Having spent an awful lot of time riding in West Queensland and the Northern Territory, bends and hills now confuse me. Just over three kilometres to Star Valley Lookout. So let's go have a gander at that. I've never actually been out this far before. Anytime I have come, I've just gone up to Paluma, turned around and went home. Star Valley Lookout, and how do I get into this? Oh, it's just here, where those... All that machinery is. Well, that's dodgy. Okay, let's go see what we can see. I'll hand it to the driver of that truck. That was a difficult ride up here on a motorbike. I can only imagine what it's like hauling that thing up here. Just glad I wasn't caught behind him. Not an unpleasant part of the world, is it? Ooh. Stalled my bike. And again. Right in front of the truck guy. There he is. Tying some huge earth moving equipment onto a trailer. And I can't even start a bike properly. One thing I really want to see up here is the Paluma Dam and Lake, which is, the turnoff anyway is just up here on the right. However, it is a dirt road and I believe it is undergoing roadworks at present. As such, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to access it in any way. Lake Paluma 11.7. Oh, let's see how we go, do. Oh yeah, not so bad. Yet, anyway. It's now getting very slippery and corrugated, so I am going to bail. Almost back at the main road. I'd love to be one of those reckless types who would just plow on down that road, not worried about any potential cost and damage to my bike. But the fact is, I'm a nurse who works four days a week and I can't afford that shit. So sometimes you just have to know when something is potentially going to get very expensive. Just pulled over to let my truck mate pass. That is a serious, serious effort getting that up here. Good on him. I shall leave it here today. That was my little tour of Paloma, Mount Speck Road and Crystal Creek. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you all again soon.
Good luck! If anyone in Townsville has lost a brake disc, the six studs would indicate it's from a ute. It's about six kilometers south of Paluma on the side of the road. Clean up your shit.